Oh, what a deal, what a deal. Hey guys, it's Jax. And I've got a problem. you guys oh, just kind of out checking things over here a little bit oh, wanted to see what's going on out here it's a little windy but I'll take the wind no snow no freezing and rain none of that we stayed ahead of all that jazz <laughs> I tell you what let me get under here where it's not so windy that was a lot of running that was pretty wild, but so worth it to know that we stayed ahead. I got up this morning, looked at the weather cameras, and uh, it's hard to tell on a weather camera how much weather they got, but they got some weather for sure. I don't know how many inches they ended up with, but uh, they got the inches, so we're, uh, we're clear. The wind's blowing today. We're gonna change our strategy now. Uh, all of a sudden, just like that, it goes from crazy, crazy, crazy to I have two days now to get to where I'm going. So with the wind blowing and whatnot, I'm gonna be the guy now on the freeway doing 63 miles an hour with my cruise control on, you know? <laughs> that everyone's blowing the doors off of because I have time to get there. So there's no sense in hustling and hammering down and, blow and burning all that extra fuel when I just don't need to. So let's go. I'll show you something here. I've, I've had it mentioned before a little bit um, that I shouldn't really show my pre-trips on video. I don't, this isn't necessarily like my pre-trip. Um, you guys see the amount of maintenance and stuff I do in my shop. So when I'm, when I'm going around, of course there's kind of a checklist, so to speak. Hopefully you can hear this, but I, I really like to just look things over in general gonna show you an example of something that is not anywhere on your pre-trip it's not listed on any list it's not anywhere but by just looking around and checking stuff out you see things like this see that guy there it's loose that's a that's just a breather hose for my rear end <laughs> sorry I just realized what I said <laughs> I mean that is what it is but it kind of sounds funny. That's a breather hose for my rear end, my front differential, and it's just loose. So you can see it's been seeping a little oil around it for whatever. So we're gonna tighten that baby up and get out of Dodge. And now if that one's loose, it only makes sense to double check the other one. No, it's clean and good. Clean and good. That's what the backside of a hopper looks like. Wild, huh? All right, my fingers are cold. Let's go.
man, I tell you what. Truck parking in this neck of the wood, it's really annoying. See, where I usually roll, which is the Midwest, the North, the West, you start getting tired, like really getting the tiredness, you can usually find a parking spot within 15, 20 minutes of getting real tired. So I start mapping out where I'm at and I'm uh, I'm on Interstate 24 right at the Kentucky-Tennessee line. And I start looking at truck stops and they're just packed full. I mean, people like parking next to the fuel islands, just stuffed in everywhere. And so I'm like, ooh. You know, so I start watching the truck stops as I'm going and I'm realizing I gotta start really paying attention here and make sure that I find a spot. Uh, I, I think I found a spot. I'm gonna let you in on this little trick if you're a young trucker. Um, usually in a rest area, they have painted lines, right? For all the truck parking, you park between the lines. Usually on each end of the painted lines, um, there's room for one more truck on each end. Kind of like a parking spot, like in a high school parking lot or wherever whatever um there's usually space not always but most of the time so in this particular uh, rest area here the very very last spot is the drive through lane so trucks drive behind the line of trucks so here's the line of trucks out there see them all scattered all the way down so behind them of course there's like a double wide lane for people to drive down and if they find a spot then they turn up and in right well, I go all the way to the very, very end and then hug in real close to the next truck next to me. And then you got to make sure that you pull forward. You probably can't, you can't tell from here, but I'm pulled out a little bit ahead of these trucks so that the guys that come in behind looking for a parking spot off my passenger side corner back here will have plenty of room to get their, easily get their rig around. So that's the one thing you gotta watch for. And if, if it's too tight and they can't get their rig around, then you can't use the spot. You gotta just drive through and go on. But uh, anyway, uh, I found a spot here. So I feel like I got, I got a little more juice in my goose. I wanted to get, uh, get on the other side of Nashville, but looking down there too, I, I don't know the area very well and I don't know all the secret parking spots. So I'm like, eh, I better just go ahead and call it here. I don't want to get down there and get super tired and then be like, oh, I can't find a parking spot. <laughs> so anyway, here I am. It's raining and it's really weird for me being a Montana boy to be in late January and have it pouring rain down and not be worrying about it freezing into ice because <laughs> that's what we're used to up where I'm from, up in old Montana. So anyway, uh, we're in good shape. I'm going to get a good rest tonight and... Uh, We'll just keep soldiering on, y'all. How'd you like that St. Louis Bridge? That was pretty cool, huh? That we went under earlier. Man, all this rain. Rain, rain. All right, y'all. I'm caving it up. I'm going back. Good night. Hey, good morning. Don't I look so much better in the morning? Just fresh off a... Of, fresh off a little snoozing. I feel better in the morning. <laughs> So I didn't realize, of course I pulled in here in the middle of the darkness, that uh, we're right behind a community. Be a nice place to park here, all these trucks running all night. For the record, I do not run. I do not run my truck at night unless it is extremely cold. It was, uh, of course this is like, this is like the weather in Montana in May. So I feel a little bad being out here because back home right now as we speak it's 10 below zero and I'm out here just uh, I'm out here just living the dream just enjoying this Tennessee everyone in Nashville is always talking about how they barely ever get snow and all this and I'm just uh, realizing it anyway things are looking good y'all things are looking good here I uh I think we're gonna mosey on out, hit the road. Uh, I have a fun little thing lined up today that ironically just happened to happen, and I'm not gonna tell you about it until it happens. It's gonna mean a lot more to me than it's gonna mean to you guys, <laughs> but I'll bring you along and show you anyway. 
Are you guys sorry? Before I pull out of here, I wanted to show you what I meant last night about this trick. This little trucking trick for you, okay? So see down here is where we all pull along from behind, right? And uh, where this white line is over here is technically, see you drive along, this white line is technically the last official spot. And then this over here would be the uh, kind of the through lane drive away where you drive through. This right here is the drive through deal. So there's this little triangle piece kind of thing here that uh, sort of no man's land. But if you hug the line over there and you make sure that you pull your truck far enough forward that no one's gonna hit your trailer coming around the backside, then uh, it's a little secret spot to find. See what I mean. So you gotta hug the line. There you have it. ABS light's not going away anytime soon with this rain. <laughs>
I'm still a little disappointed. We're going trucking. That you haven't hit a million miles in this yet. I know. He was the first thing he's doing when he comes in. He's knocking me. Haven't I, hit my million I yet. I thought real truckers. I know you've hit, hit up your trucks. Thought, I'm just you giving you a hard time. How do you what do we do? This on YouTube? Oh, it's a process. Girls are in the back. You're just jabbering. We're uh, we're good to go. I have high hopes that I'm going to be able to convert all of Caleb's kids into wanting to become truckers. All of them, the whole crew. This and one's I'm pretty sure that we got you already converted. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. man is sold. This, the the night ride is definitely going to uh, sell them on the deal. So let's uh let's hit the road. What do you think? Yes. Uh, all right, you guys come here. So this is Code Man. Didn't know until today that he really wants to become a what when you grow up? Semi truck driver. Big time. So you get a little older, we'll get you up to Montana. And I'll teach you how to run the gears and do all the stuff, right? No. On summer break, you're taking. Summer break. Yeah. I'll teach you and Army the ways. You guys will get along perfect. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Can you drink that? Oh. Yeah, all of it, all hundred ounces. Really? Slap. Slap that like button and hit that the bell. Hey, if you guys don't do the like button and hit the bell, this guy ain't gonna be happy. He's gonna slap you. <laughs> Code, what have you learned so far? How many days does it take to get to Montana from here? Three. Okay. What do truckers like to eat best on the road? Corn dogs. How many corn dogs does it take to fill up a trucker? Five. Five corn dogs. That a boy. How you girls doing back there? Good. Just doing a little rock and roll on the guitar? Oh yeah. <laughs> Make sure to hit that like button and, and slam the bell. <laughs> Slam the good man, you know the deal. <laughs> hey, remember uh remember last year I showed a few videos a few times where it was like the trick to some of these places is that you just need to be really nice to people and chat them up. Don't just come in and be like, hey, where to the park? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come in and be nice, make a friend, chat. What's going on? What's with all this rain? Come out of Montana, we don't get this much rain in six months up there. Been driving in rain for the last 10 hours. What's the deal, man? Get him loosened up. He's like, oh, we can't unload tonight, but start at 6.30 in the morning. Just, yeah. So the truck stop's kind of full of trucks. Is there, oh, yeah, man. Just come swing around. Go park over there behind the grain bin. Man, a little of that goes a long, long ways. Then he wants to keep chatting about what kind of trailer I have and where I came out of. All this great stuff. Oh man, so good to make those relationships. Now I'm here. I am gonna be, it looks like, the second truck out of five or six. In line, takes two hours a truck to unload, so coming down here instead of lollygagging up at the truck stop, uh, paid off big time. And when I was leaving, the, I grabbed a few supplies from the truck stop before I left. There was three other hoppers pulling in, and I would bet you, I'd bet you a hundred dollar bill, it's uh, some of these other sunflower trucks. I was the last to load out of, I'm not exactly sure how many, I think five or six. And it uh, looks like I'm gonna be number two down here. Yeah, buddy. We're gonna get parked, we're gonna shut her down, and uh, try to catch up on some of that sleep that I'm always short on, right? <laughs>
is a, I guess you call it a quarry. Quarry? No, it's not a quarry. It's a rock quarry. And uh, at this rock quarry, they make a lot of products. One of them is white marble. And as irony would have it, we are loading white marble to go back to the same place that I hauled the lava rocks to earlier this week. So um, we're going to bop in here. I don't know what this stuff is like. In I'm what assuming. Mile, the destination is on your right. Thank 2314 you. Whitestone Road. Thank you. Uh, I'm assuming that it's kind of ground up into small little pebbles because it goes into brick. They use it like to make bricks and stone. So that's my guess. But uh, we're going to find out shortly, you guys. We're in good shape. I'm, uh, I'm pleased. We're going to get reloaded today and that'll get us back up the road. And when I'm... Oh, hey, get on your side of the road, partner. When I'm going up the road, I'm a happy boy. So, I'm looking for something here. I hope I find it. My old trucking buddy, Mr. Smith from the truck stop where I fueled up on my way down in Missouri said that up here on top of Monteagle there's some magical trucker cafe that's supposed to be really good. But I'm not seeing it. Not seeing it. I hope he didn't lead me astray. Oh boy. We didn't come all the way in here for nothing. Uh, hmm. We'll, uh, we'll wander around. See what we find. Huh. Well... I'm gonna call it a massive old failure, darn it. Very few things this late in the week, this many miles into the week. Very few little things that can bring you joy. Guess that's that. I think I mentioned it earlier. I can't remember if that was for Instagram or for you guys. But well, Mark, the old cow trucker. So Mark? Ken, sorry. Sorry, Ken. I think it was Ken. It's a good old cow trucker name. It's like, you gotta stop up there. Check it out, but it's one of them places. But, uh, not seeing it. I mean, there's a place there. A barbecue place, but it's closed. By closed. Here's a place over here. But it looks like it's under construction. Darn it. Oh, I need to take a break and walk around and try to figure out my log books anyway. That's always a it's always a good thing. The mathematical equation. Yeah, they have one over here called the old truckers the truckers holler. But it looks very much under construction. Oh. Hope that doesn't mean I'm gonna have to go eat Wendy's. I don't mind Wendy's. I grew up on Wendy's, literally, because that's my mom's name. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> well, I don't think this other place is open either. But since I'm in a walking mood, <laughs> find out. You know, I guess after all this talk about listening to the old truckers, learn a thing or two from the good old boys, it could be that one of the downfalls of that is that in their old age, they're starting to mix up some of their decades a little bit, perhaps, where uh, this might've been the place back in the 90s, but it's been long since forgotten, maybe? If any of you guys uh, have been around Monteagle, the old Monteagle exit, you probably know what I'm talking about. <laughs>
Paducah. Paducah, Kentucky. Anyway, it's 29 degrees and just just raining enough. I got my wipers on low. It just there's just not a lot of spray. There's a little road spray still, but not as much as there seems like there should be. Wind is blowing fairly decent. I'm just going nice and easy here at about 58 miles an hour and getting my doors blown off by everybody. And every time a truck goes by, you use it as a new opportunity to kind of check the road condition as their tires drive by. Uh, if we can get a good hour in, hour and a half, I think I can punch through this little storm, this little finger that's reached up here. But uh, we'll see. If it gets sketchy, I'm just going to... I'm gonna tuck in. I'm in real good shape. Quite a ways ahead of the schedule I thought I would be. So, of course, you know me, I like to keep rolling if I can. But I got the hours, I got the time on the clock. But we do talk a lot on the podcast about if you don't need to be in a bad situation, don't be in a bad situation. So, I am aware of that as well. And we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on the old sitch. Sitch is short for situation. Come on. Which is, which is good, uh, because that means it's not adding to the actual ice, you know, water turning to ice. So, uh, roads are, you know, they got the driving lane. I think there's salt underneath here because there's a lot of spray coming up. So, we'll have to be sure and wash that off good, but uh, not much traffic now. So, that that honestly is a good thing. I, uh, the truck's not slipping. I've been, I've been testing it. Uh, when I'm pulling these little hills and stuff, what you can do is you can shift down a gear and really give it the juice and see if your wheels start spinning at all, if you have any kind of slippage. Uh, same thing with your jake brake. You can uh, you can hit your jake brake, you know, while you're prepared and in control, you can hit it and see if your wheels lock up at all. And I have had zero lockage or slippage from either one. Uh, Jake breaks or putting the juice to the uh, the goose so to speak so uh, Right now feeling good and I, and I don't think it'll get that way because now the roads covered over with kind of snow and sleet type stuff It's not really snow. It's just kind of sleet. So um, Pretty confident that we'll, uh, we'll push on through here, which would be nice if We can then we should be able to get clear of st. Louis tonight Kind of get back out into the uh, Into the home country a little bit more so to speak once you get west of the river, you start to feel like you're a little bit more uh, more at home. So I don't like my radio. I thought I had a radio for this, and it fritzed out. So I'm again radioless, uh, which is not a good night to be radioless. I feel bad because there's people wanting reports. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to buy a radio out here on the road because in Montana there's no sales tax. <laughs> so making a Two, two, three hundred dollar purchase on the road will bite you. So, anyways, that is the update. We're just gonna press on here. Um, I'm not sure the exact town we're on. I think this is 24, I 24, exit 31 Grand Rivers. So, just uh, keep after it. All right, y'all. Well. Uh, too far down the road from last time we talked here. 
And what do we have? Come on, old kid, you can't just stop on the road. This is the worst part, is trying to deal with these other trucks. You're gonna spin everybody out if you didn't keep moving. So that guy went off the road, and this guy is almost gonna stop here in front of me. I mean, I know there's a tow truck in the lane, but you have to move. This is the morning after. Oh, my salt. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to laugh it off, guys. I'm trying to laugh, I'm trying to laugh it off. I feel, feel bad for my girl. Oh, you guys. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we made it. The salt, the salt really pains my soul. Um, Especially because everyone pulled over last night anyway. So. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's nice to salt in the roads. But everybody was off the roads. Which was smart. That was smart of everybody. I like to see that. Um, yeah. Well. The plan now is. I'll be getting to. Uh, I'll be getting up to Sioux Falls tonight. We'll get unloaded. Either tonight or tomorrow morning. And then we'll have to. Uh. 
grab one more load actually we got two more loads in this loop so we're gonna just keep after it i'll fill you in on the other loads once they come in for sure i don't want to speculate on them but uh <laughs> tell you one more funny thing i wake up this morning you know doing my little sleepage and there's a dot officer right here parked inspecting that poor truck over there and uh giving him the business I rattled some uh, ice off of there around my traps just to try to help make sure they'll open tomorrow. Anyway, so yeah, the DOT's over there working this guy over, which of course made me uh, dot my I's and cross my T's here. Once again, a well-placed phone call to the office over there during business hours let me know that I was allowed to dump out here after hours and leave my paperwork. So, that pile over there, that was the lava from last week. This pile here, white marble from uh, Georgia. So, anyway, see that? Recognize that stuff? Anyway, okay, so here's the challenge with this stuff. You dump it out like a belly dump. See that? Now, most hopper guys, you just pull straight forward after this and just row it out. But, here's a good illustration. See, those are my lift bags covered in ice. If I pull forward, all this rock, right here, this part of the rock, oh, you know what I can do? Hold on, I think I have a laser. Yeah, oh, look at that. This whole edge right here of rock, all that, would uh, plow into my airbags and just shred them. So instead, what I do, I found on my last load, cool new trick we didn't know about. I can jackknife my truck a little bit. So as I'm backing up, I'm gonna point these wheels right here, the edge of my wheels, my tires, for the left corner of that windrow. Right, see the laser? Right there. So I want this tire to do a line back. It's kinda of handy. To there. So that way I can just go reverse. And by reversing, no, nothing has to drive over the, the gravel, right? Nothing does. Keeps all the equipment better. And I'll just kind of wrap the curve around the back side of this little dealy. Okay, check it out. Oops. There you have it. See how I did that? I put the truck over here next to it. A little 45 degree off the rig. Jumped around and around. Nothing has to. So I'll just continue now. I still have to do my front hopper as well. But I'll just continue to make this circle around till I can get free and clear all the way back over there. Then I'll reposition my truck over here on this side of the pile and I'll do a wrap around. Same thing on the other side for the front hopper, which has way less rock in it. And, uh, but right now, the big question mark, you guys, and I'm afraid it's gonna be time to start shoveling. With the lava rock, by the way, I'm still using my handy uh, my old light, it's been awesome. Had it for quite a few. <laughs> Do you hear that? Ugh, sure makes a racket. Um, I'm afraid that like the lava had moisture in it and then froze. It was raining down in Georgia. When we loaded, oh yeah, oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> oh no. See all that? Not that it's a ton ton, but it's all froze. So I gotta shovel all this now by hand, which I won't be able to film and shovel at the same time. So you're just gonna have to use your imaginations and just think, what would it be like to watch old Jax shovel a bunch of marble out of his trailer? 
and then voila, it'll be done. I don't need to I don't need to reposition my truck you're already lined up you just you just keep going once the back one's out move to the next one just keep backing around the corner now when they get here in the morning all they gotta do is push it up onto the main pile I get to go for a treasure hunt because I buried my hammer right here somehow while I was opening my frozen traps so wish me luck we're gonna dig some more for my hammer, and then we'll go look and see what in the world's still up inside there. Yar! Look what I found! Ha! We got it! Can't leave a good hammer behind. Okay. This is a good workout for me. It's nothing like sitting for like four days straight and driving like a dog, and then getting out and shoveling like a dog. A lot of dog stuff. Whew. Okay, you ready for this? Ah, oh. <laughs> look at that. Oh well, need a little more cardio. Here's the where it gets tough, you guys. <laughs> you only can do it until it fills the hole, and then somebody has to move the truck, and that somebody is me. So, <laughs> ah, no better time than the present. All right, my friends. Ooh, she's frosty. We're done. I got everything out that I can get. The rest is gonna have to come out with a hose. I'm gonna go wash out next. Should be a little interesting. It's an indoor washout. So we should be all right, but that's up next. I am sweating. I've been wet like a dog. Oh, everything's like a dog tonight, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> so, just as a recap for you, all of this, I had 20,000 pounds in the front of my hot in my front hopper. That's what came out on its own. That's what I shoveled out by hand. I'm gonna say that's a little bit more than this. Just looking at it roughly. So we'll just say, we'll just be conservative and say uh, 10,000 pounds of marble. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here, man. Ugh. Oh, it's time, y'all. It's time to get rid of this salt. Yes. Where's my hose? Give me my hose right there. Come on. and 88 cents cheapest fuel in the land boy it's sure a roller coaster ride isn't that with the old fuel these days can wheel in here next to old rickety rack the car shack call them rickety racks because they uh 
They make so much noise when they're empty, bouncing around the parking lots. Bang, 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 bang. Everything beating and banging. Not, not unsimilar to a spring ride cattle pot. Okay, we're gonna fuel up. We're headed down to uh, Lysite, Wyoming, I believe is how you say it. Yeah, uh, Lysite, Wyoming. If you guys remember old, uh, old Grayson, remember Grayson? We did a little interview with Grayson. Well, it's been a long time ago now, but he's still here, still doing the deal. I uh, I don't know if we'll see him in here or not. If we do, we'll be sure to say hi. Yeah, it'll be uh, Wild Wild West. Truck number is 444. Uh, Pan with the visa. Diesel only. Okie doke. Sounds good. Thanks, man. Remember those phones? During COVID, it was like, uh, I mean, I guess it's still technically COVID is here, COVID, whatever. So, but it was like, like licking that receiver. Give me those antibodies. <laughs> Look at my tongue. <laughs> she is a beautiful creature. Really liking this setup, y'all. Doesn't have to be a classic to be in love with it. <laughs> That's what I keep telling myself anyway. Man, so we're in uh, south. This would be kind of southwestern South Dakota. Uh, I can't remember the name of the highway we're running along, but uh, we're cruising. They man, they got some crazy. Like you look out here, and you're like, oh, it doesn't. They don't got that much snow. And you know, on some areas they don't. But some of these, some of these homesteads, their drifts in the shelter belts between the shelter belts and the homes. They did this years ago around all these old. They do it in Montana, Idaho. All these old homesteads. You'll see one here in a second have really nice shelter belts that were built years and years ago they planted these little trees and bushes and then when they mature they create this incredible protection just out in the prairie you see that how the homes are just like totally totally in there and just breaks but look right there look at that drift out there you see that between those trees of course it, it doesn't do it even close to the justice but the drifts are like as tall as these homes out here so i mean it's great they're gonna have some great spring runoff the rivers are all gonna fill and flood that's gonna push water down the mississippi eventually and fill a lot of these reservoirs and things which is it's all great but it's just unreal some of the driftage and it's just january i mean they're they're not even close they're not even close <laughs> to going oh well we just make it a few more weeks you know spring's gonna be here it'll start melting that's not even, you can't even start thinking about that yet. Or you'll be led into spring fever, see? Start thinking about spring. That's like going to Georgia this week. Gonna ruin me, because it gives me spring fever when spring is nowhere even close.
kitten, but not a cat. Kind of somewhere in between. Kind of that adolescent age where you're kind of lost. <laughs> anyway, I had some, uh, had a few little fixings that I put out my window there. I was hoping that it would sniff it out and come because I need that. Uh, I need a shop cat. I need, a, I need a barn cat. Got uh, got plenty of mice at home, and I thought, man, this little cat is a scrapper. It's out here fending for itself, living life on the streets. Perfect candidate to be a mouser. You know, sniff out any kind of morsel of anything, <laughs> devour. But uh, couldn't get it. Couldn't get the little turkey. Would have brought him home to a wonderful life full of mice, mouse heads, rat tails, and stuff, but. Couldn't get her done, so to the little black cat in Shadron, I'm sorry. You're gonna have to continue to fend for yourself. And it wasn't looking real good. If I'm, if I'm gonna be honest, these prospects were not looking real good. Uh, waiting in line to load. These uh, these are distillers grain pellets from corn. So this is an ethanol plant. After they're done ethanolizing, doing the ethanification of the corn. <laughs> They, uh, they dry out the kind of what's left. Some of it they keep wet, most of it they dry. Um, some of it they just sell it as a dry, kind of a granular, almost like uh, like cane sugar type texture. Um, some of it they put into a pellet so that they can ship it a little further, a little easier. Um, and that is what I'm loading, pellets. And unfortunately the pellets are the slow part, the slow line. Anyways, I had a little experience just now that I thought I'd share with you as a as a lesson. You I'm just gonna tell you the story, and you take what you want from it. How's that sound? <laughs> I uh, I'm here in line. There's like there's probably 20 semis at the facility right now. Between the trucks that are unloading corn from the farms, um, the trucks that are loading the, the granular stuff, dry distillers grain. They call it a DDG, um, and then my lane, which is the pellet lane. There's just, there's a lot of trucks. So I noticed when I washed out last night that I have a strap, there's a, a 50 foot strap that runs along the, the top of your hopper. You have two of them and they just run along the top of your hopper bows. And the point of them is to help keep the tarp up so that when it rains and stuff, it sheds moisture off better. Um, anyway, they wear as, they, as you go down the road where that strap rests on all of your bows, um, the aluminum bows, you know, that keep the, hopper doing this on the on the top uh anyway they rub on that aluminum and eventually you get a weak spot and if that strap gets any stress on it like for example loading um granite or marble chips uh dumping marble chips on those it you know puts weight on that strap anyway long story short my strap was busted which not a big deal pull the strap back up tie a knot in it crank it back tight you know it happens after you get a few knots in your strap you go get a new strap anyway i'm sitting here in line with nothing to do and i thought you know this would be a good time to go ahead and hop let's just hop back there real quick and we'll tie that thing up lickety split bing bang boom no problem so that's what i do climb up there um i'm not i'm not in like great shape or anything but i'm i'm still fairly wily and light upon my feet so not worried about that so climb up get in my trailer i'm getting the strap rigged up and doing the deal look we're moving forward yeah so i like to see progress the progress of man <laughs> ddg's loadout okay back to the story so as i'm in my hopper um i'm kind of working my strap doing the deal um I stick my head up over the side to kind of see where I need to put something and a uh, truck kind of gives me a little horn honk. I'm like, oh, hey, guy parked next to me here. And uh, he's kind of like pointing down and I'm like, I look down and there's a, there's a, there's a couple safety guys there from the elevator here. And kids just like, they're, they're both probably in their mid twenties. The, whoever was the one doing the talking was just starts just going off. You can't be in there. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, okay, <coughs> I'll get out. So I hop back down in and then I realize like, oh, to get out of here, I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to kind of climb over some stuff. I stick my head back out and I'm like, hey man, I'm gonna have to kind of 
climb out of here, you know. Basically, you climb out of the hopper and then you you kind of straddle the side rail and work your way along the, the rail and, and to the end and then you use your ladder and climb down. So I'm like, I'm gonna have to kind of sidle. And he's like, we're getting a ladder. And I'm like, no, eh, mm. And his buddy talks him into, ah, just let him, he'll be fine. Uh, I get up there and I start making my way out, you know, forget about my project, whatever, it's not gonna happen, that's fine. We'll, uh, we'll fix it later. So I uh, start sidling along and he uses this opportunity to begin to educate me. You just, again, tell me the same stuff. You just can't be in there. I don't know what, what you think and why you'd be in your trailer. I'm like, well, I was in here trying to fix this strap. But you can't, I'm like, okay, I understand, man. You don't want people in their trailers, okay? I'm like, I'm sorry. And then the wheels start turning and I'm like, but you don't have any signage up. I was like, you got no signs. You don't have all the, you know, pull in our driveway and this is what we expect of you while you're in our facility. See, there's nothing, there's nothing. There's no hard hat stuff, there's nothing. And then he looks up at me and he goes, well, it's pretty effing obvious that you shouldn't be in your trailer. Now, when people use the F word at me, it really gets me upset because that word is so overused and so annoying these days. It's like no one can think, no one can function, no one can formulate a statement or a comment to a person in conversation without using the F word. It's one of my biggest pet peeves in life at this stage that it used to be a word, it was only used in very extreme circumstances by people. Now it's just like, hey, yeah, let's just... So, it, so the second that he directs it at me, the flames inside just like I'm like oh so I was like hey man I'm gonna I'm gonna take this and I just stop I don't even I don't even start moving on the trailer I just sit up there and stop so now I'm just perched upon my perch I'm like here's the deal grammatically and as far as uh, language goes the word obvious is not being used correctly by yourself by you young fella nor is the F word. Obvious would be there's a sign as we pull in. I said, you don't have a sign, okay? So don't chirp at me about breaking the rules that are unwritten, okay? You want it to be obvious to me, then put up a sign in your driveway like so many other places do. These are the rules. Places that are chill and don't care, they don't put up a sign, okay? So that's why no sign, there's no, there's no expectation of anybody. There's no guidelines anywhere. Nobody said a word about it. So why would I think it's an issue? <sighs> Obvious would be a sign. So first, let's get that straight. <sighs> so then I, I sidle the rest of the way. I climb down, put my gloves in the truck, and I'm like, all right, you know, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go talk to this guy. I'm gonna have a word with him because you guys know me. I'm chill. I'm easy. I'm like, hey. I always use the nice approach. You know how far it gets me in life. When you're nice to people, when you say nice things, when you treat people human, it's so nice, right? Well, this guy woke up and chose not to be nice. So I go over and as I'm walking towards him, he goes and climbs in his pickup. And he's got a little scraggly red beard and I'm like, hey man, let's have a chat. Oh no, he ain't hearing it. He shuts his door, I knock on his window won't even open it won't even look at me just look straight ahead i'm like knocking on his window and he won't even look and his little safety buddies with him outside he drives away and leaves his little safety guy with me outside <laughs> and so I'm, and he drives off so i'm like dude and, and and this guy's like hey man the reason why is you know you could slip you could fall and you get stuck in there and there's trucks everywhere and i'm like hold on you don't need to teach me about why i understand from a safety perspective why certain facilities don't want drivers on their trucks, in their trucks. But you, you don't gotta tell me why. I know the rule. Well, it's just, you know. I said, Here, here's the deal. He asked me to get out, I started getting out. As I'm getting out, he starts using the F word at me. He starts telling me and I'm an idiot. And then this little guy uses the opportunity to like mince words. He's like, well, hold on. Did, did he call you an idiot? And I'm like, he did not physically with his words say idiot. But by saying that it's pretty obvious, he's implying that I am an idiot. So it's called reading between the lines, okay? Well, I mean, but he didn't call you that. I'm like, 
Okay. I don't, I don't think I have the time in the day to explain to you that, you know, how that works, that you say certain things and it makes people feel a certain way. That's, you know, like, that's the point. The reason that he said that to me was to make me feel a certain way. See, that was the point. Okay? He wasn't getting it. So at this point, pickup comes back with another guy in it. I'm like, all right, here we go. Round two. The other guy gets, uh, he's obviously, it was quite obvious that this guy, <laughs> obviously, was the safety boss because he's all put together has a nice trimmed beard and, you know not a little scraggly ho-hum anyway so he gets out and comes over and i'm like hey man he's like hey we can't and i stopped i was like oh i don't 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 give me a lecture about why i'm not supposed to be i know all that i never refute that's fine some places don't care some do you care okay if you care about it enough to come over and have your little minions swear at me and call me f-words and stuff use that in their language you should care enough to put up a sign then you wouldn't have any issues just put up a sign it's, most places do it's very simple okay yeah no no and he was all he was he was great and to his credit he was great if you're out there and you ever see this and you know who you are you did a good job he was chill i said here's the thing you can't have those guys using f-words and swearing at your customers like that he could have come right up knocked on the thing and just very nicely said hey can't have you in there just too dangerous okay can you come out and i would have come i did come out i was gonna come out he asked me to get out i got out i said i didn't fight with anybody i only started fighting when your boy started using the f word at me he said can't have that we are your customers okay we move the stuff off your facility by moving stuff out makes room to bring stuff in keeps everybody employed i'm employed you're employed we all have jobs, okay? So, can't have that. And he's tapping, you know, gives me a shoulder pad. No, no, it's all good. I said, but I'm serious. Just talk to your guy. Tell him, hey, you might just try it first being nice to someone. So that is the lesson of this story, you guys. Just be nice first. First, be nice to people. Now, if you're nice to someone and they fire back, like I nicely started climbing out of this trailer and then he just kept rolling with the craziness. Okay, now I'm gonna fight. <laughs> But, you know, a lot of times you just got to ask nice. Just, hey, man. And it had this escalated to even more. And here's the thing. There's no sign. You guys, it's so simple. A place like this, they have all these protocols, all these systems, all these rules. But no sign. <laughs> Come on. Ugh. I, I, anyway. So, uh, lesson of the video. Be nice to others. You've seen how me being nice to people has gotten me very far so far in my journey. It's gotten me, uh, you know, first in line down there in Georgia late at night. Last night, I got unloaded after hours on my own. It just, it's great. This guy, had he been nice, I would have climbed out of my trailer and said, ah, it's fine, I'll fix it. I, I understand, because to be honest with you, most places like this are super strict about everything, like safety vests, hard hats, steel-toed boots, all the stuff before you can even get out. There was no sign. And if there's no sign, it's like, okay, well, I would like to get out and, you know, inspect my equipment, do some things, tinker on stuff, because I'm going to be sitting here for an hour and a half. There's no sign, so I'm going to do it. Well, it makes me wonder what other unwritten rules there are. That That is the definition of an unwritten rule. When when people use that phrase, they're like, well, it's kind of an unwritten rule. They mean that it's, you know, it's something that, you know, we all know, like, hey, when you come in, leave your muddy boots in the mudroom. There doesn't need to be a sign in the mudroom that says, leave your muddy boots in the mudroom at the house. It's an unwritten rule. This is a rule that definitely needs to be written. Like, hey, most places do, you didn't. So I assume you were, you were fine. Oh, you know? So, enough on that. Still wait. Now there's a cool truck. It's a classical Western star. Oh, I love it. They're pulling some weight. Well, I taught the weeping willow how to cry, cry, cry. <laughs> Let's see, what else can we do? Ten days and one shower later, I taught myself how to cry, cry, cry. Well, y'all, pardon the grease, pardon the oil. I do have a remedy for that. We 
it goes a little something like this. Come on. There, now I look presentable. <laughs> oh, okay, let me fill you in. Man, yesterday was a l just a long day. It was a good day. Everything went good, but it was a long day. Wow. I will never not, wait. I will always take some sun in my face. No matter how bright the brightness, just lay it on me. Especially February 2nd in Casper, Wyoming. One of the most inhospitable lands in the West. Nice place. But it can be gnarly in the winter. Anyway, so yesterday we pushed across from Mitchell, South Dakota over to Murdo, South Dakota. Then we went down to Mission, South Dakota and then kind of ziggle zaggled over to uh, Ulrich, South Dakota, down to Shadron, Nebraska. Hung out there for a little bit, waited for the scale to close in Lusk, Wyoming. Crossed the scale in Lusk. Uh, well, went by the scale, because it was closed. <laughs> Hence why I waited in Shadron. Sometimes it's just worth just, uh, you know, take an hour, do some paperwork, get your affairs in order, take a little break and uh, let the scale close down. So then from there, we went over to the freeway and up to where I landed in Casper. Not a huge mileage day. I mean, maybe 600 miles, 500, 500 miles probably. But just a lot of two lane zigzagging. There's not a great way to get from, from Mitchell, South Dakota to Lysite, Wyoming, where we're headed. Um, the recommended route has us climbing over a, um, one of the biggest one of the biggest mountain passes in the west which is uh between buffalo wyoming and ten sleep wyoming it's just like this endless hill up like for miles and down into ten sleep and i just i don't gotta you know even if i gotta go a few extra miles to get around it it's just it's a lot of pulling on your truck and anyway so uh that led to my roundabout way, which still was a short way, mileage wise. You know, mileage wise, it wasn't like I was adding a ton of miles or anything like that. Just a lot of two lanes and turns and zigzags. But anyway, so now we are about 80 miles from where I'm unloading. I got to catch up to speed. The plan was unload in Lysight last night, and then they wanted me to bounce back to uh, almost to Valentine, Nebraska, and reload Milo there today to shoot all the way out uh, into Washington by tomorrow at two o'clock. I got to looking at my schedule, I can't, I have to be home Monday. One, I've been on the road a long time, I'm excited to see my family, which they're, they're cool about, they're not like, this place is great. But anyway, uh, so I called him yesterday, I was like, man, I'm doing the math, and if those guys don't unload on a Saturday morning at that place in Washington, I don't think it's gonna fly. I don't think it's possible. I'm going to get stuck out there. Which normally is not a big deal, but I have to be home Monday because I have a load of cows that are going to Kansas on Monday. So I said I have to be home by Monday morning. And if they want to unload me Saturday, then I can't get home from from uh, Spokane by then. So anyway, they said, no, no, no problem. we got more trucks out in, out in Nebraska. We'll just send somebody up for it. It's not, no biggie. Don't sweat it at all. So because of that, I ended up being able to get a nice, big, old, beautiful, giant sleep last night. Turned in early, got a big snooze. That's why my hair's extra greasy. <laughs> and everyone's always like, why don't you just go shower? Well, I just like to rock and roll, man. It's a rock and roll life. Rock and roll guys don't just shower every day, okay? It's just, that's the answer, plain and simple. Uh, so, uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's rip out of here. So we're going to go unload these... Uh, these pellets and then from there we're gonna uh, we're gonna bounce bounce meaning that we're empty we're gonna bounce up home um, and that'll uh, that'll put a wrap on the cap here just about to Lysite Wyoming I hope I'm saying that right a little settlement nestled in the Madden gas field there are flashing lights. Well, they're not flashing right now, thankfully. But there, there are signs with lights and wind socks that warn you not to enter if the lights are flashing because they're emitting poisonous gases from certain wells at certain times. So anyway, we came in on a morning when the lights were, uh, were not flashing here in the old Madden. So <laughs> thankfully, 
Not sure what all that entails, but uh, we are getting close to our destination. Some uh, pretty, pretty wild, desolate country.
was the sketchy part I could not film coming in. Coming into this place was like, whoa! So I came from this road back there that's down the creek. And I had to make this turn and get up in here. Now you can't tell from here, it looks like it's flat ground. But it's not at all. It's uphill. Like, <laughs> like if I just let off the uh, brake, I just start rolling away. I'm not in gear right now. <laughs> so anyway, I had to come from up the road, make this into this deep, <laughs> deep snow make the turn and shoot back that way up the hill. See the hill back there? Back my trailer? Up the hill. Uh, thank goodness this truck has uh, a good rear locker, really good tires, and uh, <laughs> a really good operator. <laughs> All right, y'all, well, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. we're out of the woods. Well, we're halfway out of the woods. We're back to the county road part of the out of the woods. <laughs> Man, uh, that was one of those places that took all of my skills. It's one of those places that when you see where you're headed into, you're like, I'm glad that I grew up trucking in the mountains, hauling cattle on these ridiculous, crazy, windy mountain roads, tight spots, uneven ground that's side to side uneven. Um, super up, super down, sorry, super up, super down, and snow packed, and loaded, and all that, all that high pressure stuff, man. <laughs> and not having a clue that any of it was coming. It was just like, follow me to the place, da -da -da, all of a sudden, turns off the main road. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> so it was a total surprise, because the address that was on the shipping papers was like, 15 miles back in town. So you don't know leading up to it. And in the phone conversation, setting it up, didn't realize that that's where we were going. It wasn't really mentioned. So of course, I'm always down for a party and I'm even more down for a party when I get in, get unloaded, get out, and I don't tear anything up. I didn't pop any tires, which can happen on these kind of runs. Uh, I don't think that I screwed up the alignment on my truck. Everything seems to so far just feel like it's a uh, good and normal. I gotta show you this view from right here. Wyoming, man. The vast expanse. They said we need to quit having children because the world's getting too crowded. <laughs> You've never been to northern Wyoming. <laughs> oh, so from here, guys, this is gonna pretty well wrap it up. Um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna hit the highway here in another handful of miles. Got about a four and a half hour drive north of here, and I think I'll be back in the home country. So, thank you so much for coming along, following along, being a good supporter, being a good friend to me. I'm happy to have you on these journeys. <sighs> Got some really good and exciting things coming up this year. It's gonna be some really great and different content. It's gonna be a lot of good old content. It's gonna be a lot of crazy new stuff. But uh, continue to follow along, you guys, and we'll have these adventures together, you and I. Wait, wait, hold on. I think I just realized why it's so desolate out here. Poison gas area. Do not enter when lights are flashing. You know, ironically, that's the same thing that I tell my wife when I get home off the road as I'm trying to detox my stomach from all the road food. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.